All right, good morning. And we're on time. Hello, Gidopsians. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. That was perfect for like post travel morning. I like it. All right, welcome to not another episode of GitOps Guide to the Galaxy, but welcome to ArgoCon uh, EU 2024. Um, today we have a panel uh, with my good friends Andrew Block, Dan Garfield, what, what? and Christian Hernandez. Thank you, yeah. There will not be jokes, but I do expect applause anyway. Um, so today, uh, expanding Argo CD content management using OCI artifacts. That is a mouthful. What does it mean? Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick this off. Yeah. It's, it's kind of my baby. I, I, I love it a lot about it. And I kind of want to talk to you about OCI artifacts. So you know who we are. Maybe. So let me introduce myself. My name is Andy Block. I'm a distinguished architect at Red Hat. I've been working in the GitOps and Argo space for, goodness gracious, got to be three, four years. So mm. done, done a lot. Um, been working with a lot of folks you know, here on the stage, in the community, and kind of want to talk to you today about what OCI artifacts are and what they can mean to Argo. Dan, do you want to just give an introduction to yourself? Sure. So my name is Dan Garfield. I'm co-founder and chief open source officer of CodeFresh, but now uh, acquired by Octopus Deploy and running open source in the uh, Argo office there. Yeah. So uh, Chris Hernandez, uh, head of community at Acuity, um, self-proclaimed uh, GitOps kingpin, and very excited about what OCI means to GitOps in general. So. And you're your MC here. Oh, right. Yes, of course. So uh, I'm your MC today. My name is Hillary Lipsig. I am a principal reliability engineer at Red Hat and host of the Red Hat live stream, GitOps Guide to the Galaxy, hence the shirt. So, so most of us know there are two primary sources of, for applications in Argo. It's either going to be Git or Helm. Now. Certainly, everyone has access to either a Git repository or a Helm repository, right? Right? Yes. But maybe <laughs> not. Maybe you're in certain environments where those aren't available. Maybe there are some networking constraints, firewall rules, regulations. I have many of my customers where they're not allowed to have a Git repository in their deployment and operational environment because of separation of concerns, development, operations or certain policies from an organization standpoint don't allow that to occur. So you just can't have that type of environment or they just can't deploy a Git server in that environment. We're talking edge environments. However, what does every Kubernetes environment have access to? Anybody? A container registry because we're typically using container images for our applications. So why can't we go ahead and take advantage of the infrastructure that we already have in place and reuse that for Argo CD? And that's what we are going to talk about today in leveraging OCI artifacts. Now, what the heck is OCI artifacts? I hear the word artifacts. And an artifact can be a lot of things. It can be a jar, it can be a Maven module, you know, Python module, you name it. Well, OCI, let's talk about what OCI is. OCI is the Open Container Initiative. It means another thing, but in this context, OCI is the Open Container Initiative. It is an open governance structure that really focuses on container formats and runtimes. There were some container wars, conflicts of interest, um, <coughs> stuff about Goodness gracious, seven, eight years ago? God, we're getting old here in the Kubernetes world. Uh, but really, the OCI group came together to create these standards to define how container images should be packaged, how they should be run. And recently, there's a lot of thought and interest around this concept of artifacts, being able to leverage container images and a lot of the OCI structures in many of the same ways that, we're, that we leverage container images. So, it allow, so OCI Artifacts allows us to use uh, container repositories for storage of other things aside from container images. We're talking things that we are using today. Helm charts can be stored in container images. WASM modules, software with materials artifacts, 
they're already are able to be stored as OCI artifacts. Now, why can't we go ahead and take that same concept and extend that to Argo CD? So, as I mentioned, OCI artifacts, or pardon me, OCI Helm charts has been supported in Argo since version 1.8. Now it's back in 2020. I know other things happened in 2020, so we need not want to remember that. <laughs> However, this we want to do want to remember as a way that we can enable OCI already in the Argo CD ecosystem. And it's really easy to get started with Helm and OCI if you haven't used that as a source type in the past. Create a secret that has the um, property uh, OCI enable, probably enable OCI to true, and you can start leveraging Helm charts that are stored in your OCI registry. So, why are we here? Well, we're going to talk today about taking advantage of that and reusing it to, be, to provide more native capabilities around OCI and Argo. So, there's an enhancement proposal that was submitted about a year ago by some guy. Can't imagine who. Looks familiar. Um, and some folks also contributing, also familiar. So everyone who put together this enhancement proposal is sitting here on the stage. There's one other person, Michael, who you saw earlier. He was on the talk previously. We're all very interested in the opportunities for OCI artifacts and Argo CD. We're gonna to talk to some of the ways that it solves challenges some of the areas that we're thinking about, and really how we can get the community to help build this content together. Really, this isn't about the four of us, five of us, et cetera, building it ourselves. That's not why we're here. We all just didn't come and hear people talk about Argo. It is, we wanna work with Argo, we wanna contribute to Argo, we wanna make Argo a better place to work and thrive. So, some of the areas that we're thinking about and we're going to talk through of them, everything from client development, OC, uh, application sources, CLI integration, user in uh, interfaces. These are all things that we're thinking about, but we want to, A, talk to you all, see what you think, because, you know, we're just a couple guys and gals. We want to hear what your thoughts are and if this is an interest to you or if you think we're just crazy, which is possible, but at least in this context. Both things can be true at the same time. Yeah, that is very true. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to stand gonna have up. Hillary, go ahead and start standing and ask us questions and get some questions from the audience. Wonderful. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I was going to bring note cards and be like, you know, really wasteful and throw them around. And then I forgot my note cards. So we're doing this from the phone and I'm sorry about that. Um, more technical anyways. It's more technical anyways, but it would have been, you know, fun. Anyway, like I said, there will be no jokes. Um, so just to all of you, can you kind of individually talk a little bit about your interaction with like OCI artifacts up, up to now. And we're not gonna make you go last because you were just talking. And we're gonna start on the other end with Christian. Yeah, so um, with the OCI artifacts, so um, with the integration that is possible with, especially um, in Argo CD, but just in general with GetOps that we have the ability to like scale at, at some point. So um, um, interacting, being able to put in payloads into an OCI registry um, opens up a lot in terms of, of application deployment, in terms of scalability, and then things like that. So um, I, from um, early on, I saw the, uh, the ability for scalability and the, the ability to store payloads of, of things that we're trying to do at scale, so. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we, we worked previously on this standard called CNAB, which is Cloud Native Application Bundles. And the idea of that was very similar. Basically, you kind of package it as an OCI and you have this bundle that you can throw at any infrastructure and it knows how to self start and install and uh, come up to the desired spec. So you could, you could basically throw this at like a Kubernetes cluster sitting on a container ship in the middle of the Indian Ocean and it would just bootstrap and work. And um, so like OCI can be uh, abused to do lots of things. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's an abuse, but it's an extension of the, the, the format. So obviously we're all familiar, you know, working with Docker images that's where everybody kind of comes into OCI artifacts. 
But just the, just the controls and the way that we think about the structure of those repositories kind of informs this because most people, when they want to ship a change, they don't think about shipping a manifest. They think about shipping a binary, right? So they're like, I built it, CI ran it, it tested, and it pushed to the repo. After that, it should get deployed. And they don't, they don't necessarily think about the GitOps side of the equation of like, okay, well, actually, you know, we need to version our manifest because we want to do rollbacks later if we need to, blah, 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 blah. And they probably shouldn't have to think about that uh, because ultimately they just really want to get it deployed. Uh, in terms of OCI artifacts, uh, I became a contributor to the Helm project to bring OCI to GA. It had been in tech um, experimental phase for about two years. So I joined the community to help really drive that to GA, which we did uh, about two years ago. Since that time, I'm, I also became a maintainer on the Auras project. So Auras is the OCI registries as storage project. It is the underlying library underneath Helm and many other CNCF projects. So uh, I know, and actually uh, uh, Auras is being used currently within the Argo CD project as well. So that makes it for more of a natural fit for that type of library to be the bread and butter underneath this integration that we're looking to develop and deliver. So going back actually one slide to our, our uh, proposal here. Andy, you wrote this proposal and I think we've got a little bit of it from you, but can you expand on your motivation on this just a little bit more, especially kind of t with, the, with the proposal in front of people and the opportunity for them to really take it in? Yeah, so, so the proposal really is meant to kind of get thoughts from those who may be in similar situations that I've seen personally, I've worked with my customers and have seen as well. Um, there will be another slide at the end that talks more about more of the concrete implementation of this proposal. Is that a push forward moment here? Can I, can I bring up a, one of those scenarios that you were talking about, Andrew? Yeah, go ahead. So we, we just had a talk from Michael Crenshaw and Zach uh, Aller from Intuit talking about the, the problem of basically like how you manage your repositories. Yeah. And in Intuit, the way that they do it is they have like their Helm charts, their, their, their stuff in one repository. They render all of those and then they commit those to a separate repository that is the source of truth, right? So with this proposal, you, you essentially would take that second repository and make that an OCI registry. Right, what I'm kind of envisioning and thinking about here is your CI process or some tool would go ahead and leverage some capabilities we're gonna be putting into the, um, uh, the Argo CD CLI that will allow you to create that artifact bundle and allow you to push it to that container registry. We're gonna bring this natively so you don't have to think. You can just say, hey, I have a source of a directory source that could be a Helm chart potentially. It could be just a regular Kubernetes manifest. It could be um, you know, customized templates. Those get packaged up and pushed to a container registry and then the, the repo server would pull it down. The controller in Argo would then go ahead and render them the same way that they would be rendered from Git and you get all the benefits of Argo CD in the same way. The idea is that we're just treating it as another application source. So if you can go ahead and pull from a, a Git repository, you can pull from a OCI artifact and then render them the same way. You can reuse the same plugins, the same everything. That's the goal. So my pre-prepared questions are going to make you repeat yourselves. I'm gonna to wanna to avoid that <laughs> a little bit, just for the benefit of the audience. Go ahead. Did you... I'm gonna give you a mic. Yeah. Please. I'm just wondering if then OCI registries are treated as the source, would it be possible then in Argo CD to have, like to integrate additional policies? For example, as part of OCI 1.1, you can add as part of, for example, a container image, a signature, and then it's all within, it's like a dependency tree. So would, for example, policies such as only pull this artifact if it has a signature, would that be within the scope? or would that be implemented in external policy management versus Argo CD? I think it could, it could be in both. The security opportunities here to strengthen the entire providence of our GitOps manifests, we now open up 
a entire ecosystem that already exists in Kubernetes and now we can bolt onto them. Now within Argo, we can, we don't have to reinvent everything ourselves. We can go ahead and reuse a lot of what's already out there. That you hit, you hit the nail on the head. Security is definitely an area that I'm thinking about as well. So, uh, anything else, yeah, guys? Well, on, on top of that, right, it's, um, there's definitely like the security aspect of it, especially um, if um, we're using things like OCI and people are like tagging things where, where it's, um, you can have things like signatures and things like that. Um, I also like to look at it from the perspective of kind of building off of kind of what Dan was uh, talking about is that who here are using um, rendered manifests? Anyone using rendered manifest pattern? Yeah, so like that's kind of like one of my favorite things to do. Um, and uh, OCI then becomes like Dan was saying, kind of like the delivery mechanism, the delivery. Now we have a way to like bundle our delivery into like, hey, this is like my deployable artifact. And I actually think that I actually did a talk um, at Get, uh, GitOpsCon about how I think we're kind of abusing Git in a way by using it as like a, a database, using it as a read and write heavy database to where it wasn't really meant to be used the way we're using it now. Um, and it's just, it just happens to be able to now uh, withstand that. But I think with OCI and being able to render those manifests, if you're using render manifests into a bundle, um, now we're taking a lot of stress also off of, of, uh, of Git. As I mean, well. and I can also see like a policy that we can throw into a repository, you know, our configuration that says, if you have a wildcard that says, dev, don't deploy it. And certain other types of regexes that we can apply to applications that says what type of content we can actually bring in and bring not. I also realize there also is a mic back there. So I think for questions, isn't that the one that I think? Yes, oh, they two can, mics. There's they can one. line up over there and over here for, for questions. I mean, I don't mind getting my exercise, but at least that might be more formal. <laughs> yeah, it might be more formal, easier to keep track of. I also need to keep us on time. Okay. So, you know, that is, that is my job. There are two mics. If you can, you there, go first, if you can just head over there. And there. there. Okay, so before we take this question, because my pre-prepared question links into some of the things we just had, and I want to get that out. So, what limitations in Argo CD do we see running afoul of? Um, with the current, you know, vision for OCI and it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a path. Like, what are the current limitations that Argo CD has that we're going to hit? Uh, one of them is going to be around immutability um, because tags aren't necessarily, you can, they're not, they're, they are mutable. You, mm -hmm. can, you can modify them if you have a 1.0. 1.0 doesn't always mean 1.0. 1.0, one of the other benefits is that you can use digests and those are immutable. So we'll see some interesting new patterns and I'm hoping personally, that folks get a chance to see the benefits of using digest SHAs instead of tags because of those concerns where it, of immutability. I was, I was exactly the same thing I was thinking. And the, the challenge with that, of course, is like, what, uh, uh, how many people are using image updater today? Argo CD image updater? A handful of people. Like that Semver pattern of like, oh, I want to deploy, you know, 1.x. Um, that makes a lot of sense in this proposal because you could basically just say the same thing and you've got the source of truth, which is awesome, but there's a tension there because then you aren't using the digest and so you do lose immutability. Um, so you have to have some, I don't know, I think we needed some better way to solve that at some point. You also bring up a thought of maybe using a similar concept with image updater for application sources to have it be floating. Yeah. He was already thinking of new Ooh. opportunities. I know. I know, right? Yeah, he's just... fancy. All right. Well, let's transition over to Mike there. Hi. Uh, about rendering manifest, doesn't it collide with the concept of not using Git but a storage and some kind of a binary instead of code like Git? Because when you when you mentioned uh, rendering uh, rendering manifest, it's it's one of the problem. It's not to have the transparency to see what was changed exactly. So, so, that's, so that's really where it, where it comes down to, rendering the manifest at either the source or at Argo. Because you can do it either one of two ways. You can render them fully within your CI pipeline, then push the OCI artifact. Or you can push the raw manifest, which 
and then have those be stored in OCI artifacts and then have Argo render them the same way they're rendered today. There are a couple of different patterns and we'll see the patterns continue to evolve as we move this, this proposal forward. Yeah, and I think rendering manifests further uh, earlier in the process, um, you're not then, at, if you're doing it there, you're not doing it at, at the Argo state, which means that you're actually, if you're doing it at the Argo state, which is happening now, you're actually mutating your source of truth. Um, and a lot of things can happen, right? It should be safe, quote unquote, but you are mutating them when Argo renders them versus rendering them earlier on and deli deliver, you know, creating a payload, you know, put that in an immutable, you know, system like OCI, then have Argo read that as well. Um, you, you, you lose some of like things like um, um, being able to like diff on the fly, but, uh, but you can like, see the diff either like in, in the registry or like on the Argo CD UI itself. There are certainly some valid use cases for why you want to render them on the fly. Like yeah. you want to inject secrets. Like secrets, or other yeah. There's like other things. Right, Actually, that you need to don't inject secrets. Injecting ESO. secrets is bullcrap. Stop doing it. Use references to secrets. I, I yes. mean, use I, references to secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you, but that's ESO, like yeah, yeah. that's like super common. Is that people actually do that with Argo? And there are some plugins that enable it. And I don't want to call them out because I don't want to make anybody feel bad. But um, it's like kind of crazy that people will take vault secrets and just shove them into manifest and stick them into Kubernetes because uh, they're in plain text. People, hello, like, are we? Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna as 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 Talk much as I about. so agree with you, crazy pills here. As much as I so agree with you, we have two minutes and at least one more audience question. Yeah. So you know what? Let us go. Let's go do that that TED oh, talk uh, over drinks. Go ahead. Yeah, not so much of a question, but more of. I totally agree. I created the request for customized support for OCI in Argo CD that is also linked in this issue that you have. So the sooner the better. And this is exactly what already exists in Flux. So yes, please is the short answer. Yes, there <laughs> so are, yes, those are exist out there too. So we're trying to bring a lot of that same parity to the entire ecosystem. So if you are interested. If you are interested in helping out. <laughs> Three, three, three locations. Right. Uh, one of them is join the brand new Slack channel that is now on CNCF Slack, Argo CD OCI integration. Uh, we now have an implementation enhancement proposal. So it's basically taking that proposal and putting the actual tasks on them. And then providing your own input, you can now go ahead and go uh, um, engage in that and then just engage with the community. Yep, of course. Anywhere that you feel like getting involved with the community is a good place to get involved. So let me see, how did we do? Oh, we have like 30 seconds left. I'm gonna call that on time. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Everyone.